Me neither. We're all going in it. <laughs> all right. That's Twenty good. seconds. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the wrong flavor. I thought it was. You ever drink Seven Up and it ends up being water? You think it's water and it's Seven Up? No, no, I got one. Okay. Okay, two seconds. Hi, this is Axis of Love Live, and I'm Denise Dory, your guest. I will tell you a few things about myself. I like to talk about politics, especially from the progressive point of view, to people who aren't from the progressive point of view, to try to bring them into the light. Ooh, come to the light, please. <laughs> you know you want to. And so I have two guests with me, and uh, one is, they're both ladies. We have a lot of estrogen in here today. And um, the lady on the left is Shona Gokenauer. She is the medical cannabis compassionate uh, educational director for Axis of Love. And I don't know if I said that right, but. It works. Okay. And, and Susan Bryan, who, and please introduce yourself. You have a lot of titles. Susan Bryan. Uh, I am a resident of the Tenderloin. I am the sec I am, oops, treasurer of Alliance for a Better District 6. And I'm also the treasurer for Central City Democrats, which is a chartered um, Democratic club as of two years ago, maybe three. And you do great work. I know of your work. Thank you. Yes. And you have meetings. Tell, tell the audience about your meetings that you have once every month, isn't it? We have uh, meetings, yes. Uh, we have Central City Democrats meetings as well as Alliance for a Better District 6. Uh, with the Alliance for a Better District 6, we do political education. We've had uh, people from the Elections Department explain the process. And um, also we've had forums. We've had forums for at least 10 years. Well, 12. Forums for, say, for the candidates, for the candidates forum. to. Candidates forum to, uh, to tell why, why they should be voted for. And we actually have some of those on YouTube. Yes. Mm. Not this, I don't know if we put any up this year, but. So, uh, which forum did you last have uh, for, did you do one for District 5 or? Uh, n no, we haven't uh, done, we, we stay in District 6, but we have uh, endorsed uh, uh, District 5, and we have endorsed. Oh, we have a call. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Yes, uh, this is, uh, are my live? Yes. Yep. <laughs> uh, hi, this is uh, Michael Nolte. I'm the uh, president of Central City Democrats. Well, hello. Welcome to the show, Michael. And um, I wanted to point out that our club has been around for, uh, since 1990, since 1996. And it is a charter democratic club for the, uh, the Central City Democrats. Sorry, I'm getting feedback because I'm watching you on TV too. So, oh, yeah. turn, turn, <laughs> turn that down. down. Um, so, so anyway, I wanted to to mention that uh, it's very important that uh, people vote today oh. uh, because the, the the Democrats and the Republicans, like everybody else, they all need to uh, get, uh, get out to vote. And I think what's more important is that. Um, that, uh, you know, whoever wins today in the election, that, you know, uh, that we all come together as a, as a uh, country and uh, work towards common good. Because I think a lot of times what we find is a lot of uh, uh, um, things that are going on that, uh, that particularly the low-income people in, in the uh, downtown area, they are always put down and don't give them a chance. To uh, have be represented in uh, the democracy, and there's a lot of power plays that go on. But anyway, I wanted to uh, let let you get back to uh, your two um, people to talk about themselves and what they do for the neighborhood and the community, because I think that you have some good uh, guests on tonight. And I'll let you get back to your show. Yay, Michael. Thank, you, Michael. Thank, you. Thank you, Michael. That's a man that does great work. He's actually a, he's the mortar that holds the tenderloin together in a way. He makes he, he uh, has parties once a month for people to come in and have fun. And it's all, it's great. He's so let's done political mentoring as well. Yes, yes, let's talk more about that. Uh, 
talk more about your mentoring of uh, yours and Michael's mentoring. Well, um, I can speak to my being mentored. Uh, I used to uh, volunteer at the Bay Area Alternative Press in Berkeley, and I was going to uh, Berkeley three times a week, and it began to dawn on me that maybe my neighborhood could use the, my newfound talents, and uh, that's when I got involved in what was the North of Market Planning Coalition, and uh, Michael was prominent in that, and um, he sort of uh, kept, steered me right on a lot of issues, which, you know, I could go off in all directions, and he pointed out what was really necessary for the neighborhood. Bravo. And you also, uh, being a Democratic club, we hold regular meetings to endorse candidates, so mm -hmm. that's a feather in their cap to be endorsed by your club and have it on their literature as yes. well. Yes, also so. we, we, we are, uh, Alliance for a Better District 6 is involved in reviewing liquor licenses and also there's been presentations. <coughs> oh dear. Have we a call? Yes, I th something I think was we, flashing, I yes. I think you have a, another call coming in. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Uh, at Hi, Denise. It's Psychic Frank. Frank, good to hear from you. Yeah, uh, you guys look great. Congratulations on your show. Uh, it, it sounds great. I wanted to, I wanted to ask if Shauna, if she would uh, elaborate on some of what's the the uh, attack on what's going on with the cannabis closed down. Just the state of you know state of the union as far as what's going on with cannabis. Maybe she give us an update on what's going on there. No, no offense to the woman who was just talking, but I think cannabis, everybody I know is really interested in, uh, you know, what's going to be going on with all the clubs closing, all the dispensaries closing. There's just a few left, and uh, I know L.A. is in worse shape. Shona knows yeah, all about LA that, so maybe she could elaborate on that. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. Um, okay. Yeah, Los Angeles is indefinitely, you know, if you go from the local level to the state level to the federal level, let's start at the local level here in San Francisco. We're suffering the most in San Francisco because we have some of our more community-based collectives being pushed off the map, that being HopeNet, Vapor Room, Divinity Tree. All these facilities really had... Um, great patient services that were community-based and peer-led by, you know, neighborhood activists that the, that the community's known for a great uh, long time. And um, the efforts to kind of be able to allow these dispensaries to continue to serve the people that they have been have kind of been, you know, stagnating around the elections and et cetera. But uh, the most recent news is that Mayor Lee has rejected a plan to have these uh, displaced collectives be able to serve their membership on our city public land, which to me is very frustrating because the voters passed Proposition S several years ago, which allocated public, uh, you know, placement of gardens for low-income people in particular. And it was just a policy question, but we already have the will of the voters of the city. So I'm hoping that we can move that forward um, once the, the Medical Cannabis Task Force gets up and in swing and able to make our quorum, which is really essential. Um, there's been a lot of pushback that it's too patient-dominated at this point, and you know, some really silly things going on there. Um, but the true nature of it is very balanced. It was constructed to have enough seats to represent ownership, patients, cultivators, including a low income cultivation uh, seat. So I feel when we get that constructed and functioning, we'll be able to address the needs of the displaced collectives. I think at the state level, we're looking at a lot of confusion. Um, quite honestly, the different components of the cannabis community couldn't get anything onto our ballot today. Cannabis voters will notice in California we have nothing to vote for mm -hmm. regarding uh, getting people out of prison for cannabis, regarding getting you know, a more structured, streamlined um, uh, permit process for our collectives across the state. Um, and, and, and when I say that, I also want to hesitate people for jumping on board with things like AB 2312, which a lot of people thought was for our community because it had Tom Amiano's name on it, and this person and that person, but what it was actually doing is creating a monopoly. 
Um, and that's mm. no good for patients because the minute we have fewer places, we pay higher prices. On the federal level, I want to say that you will be doing much worse off tonight if you go and vote for Mitt Romney. Um, I can't stress that enough. He is probably the only politician who has literally turned his back on a quadriplegic asking the question about medical cannabis. And I personally believe in separation of church and state, you know, so I could never vote. I'm sorry for a Mormon. I'm a woman as well. But I think what we're looking at the federal, when we look at the federal process, we're looking at a chipping away process, really. It's going to be many more years before we have this in a truly good place for patients. Yes. We have to wait till the electorate is more educated. The electorate is not educated. The media has let us down by misinforming the electorate. And uh, I'm going to name names Rupert Murdoch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Denise, we're, we're, coming, we're coming for you, she's Rupert. She's the ultimate we're right coming girl. For you, Rupert. So, yeah, so I'm really happy to, to know that we're probably going to have legal cannabis in Colorado, and it's way ahead. I don't know about Washington or Oregon. I heard that they've got similar propositions, so we'll have to wait and see. And Twitter is not usable. <laughs> here so can't do that that's off the table but actually if you haven't voted you've got about an hour uh, hour or two to vote so get out there and vote you get your three little ballot stubs that that way they look just like this these things you get these three of these one two three and you'll have voted for everything in San Francisco so I urge you to vote Democratic but that's just me third-party candidates um, they're fine if you're in a blue state, a hardcore blue state. If you're in a red state, Green Party candidates don't. It's awful to do not vote for them, or you're just handing the election to the, the red people, you know, the impoverished red states, the Jim Crow states, who are seem to be deciding elections. And it's I don't know how a few undecided people, you know, that I don't know where they live in caves or they don't know what's going on. But you know, how can they be undecided about this stuff? You know, you want to put grandma on. On a, um, you know, a starved granny, you know, what do they call them, granny starvers? Well, yeah. I think there's also so much smoke and mirrors, even on the local level with our elections this year, in San Francisco especially, we've had a lot of targeting of candidates, like District 5 candidate Julian Davis, who, uh, an organization that I work with, Patients for uh, Compassionate Use Policies, has endorsed, and We've worked with him uh, several times over on medical cannabis issues, and we came across, you know, a October surprise. Um, it really burst a lot yeah. of our naivete um, as to how. Uh, one thing I was told when I first got into City Hall is Democrats eat their young, and I didn't actually understand that until I saw them cannibalizing their young. You know, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is the worst way. We were talking before about some political mentoring, and, and the political mentoring in the city is pretty um, caustic and toxic, and we, we really haven't gotten to the point where we're training leaders. We're actually training horse traders, and we're um, showing appreciation for people that create scandal mm -hmm. and and the smoke and mirror tr tricks. And in, in that process, as neighborhood activists, and we have districts five and six represented here, mm -hmm. um, we lose the neighborhood community voice because we're so enthralled with all this push and pull of... But these are people's lives. Exactly. And people's lives, our lives, should be the first thing that we're talking about, not, you know, the, the elite city families uh, inner clan disputes. We want our neighborhood safe. Mm -hmm. We want um, affordable housing, and I don't mean affordable for the middle class. I mean affordable for working class people, poor people, and disabled people. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say? Yes, but, you know, it's been... 32 years since Ronald Reagan was elected. And um, uh, this is, uh, the, he started us on this path, downward path. Spiral. I agree. Well, when he outsourced our jobs, what was there for anyone to do mm -hmm. except get in trouble? And, and they, then the prison industrial complex started up, mm -hmm. and then, then they, then they well, the war on drugs was literally a war on poor people. I mean, and that started during the Reagan era. We have a lot of, of nonviolent offenders in prison and, and families broken up that were functioning. Mm -hmm. 
uh, one in 19, I think it was 1983, around 300,000 people were kicked off a of disability and had to, had in, um, uh, of that uh, 300,000, I think 76,000 died. Oh my God. And the, the rest were put back on disability. This was, I think it was a 19, this is, this is a, this is a Republican administration. And um, they had people sort of on the lookout for people to kick off. And that's so Third Reich city planning and policy. I mean, the f it's when you put the people that are disabled mm -hmm. as the target of, you know, isolation and containment, I mean, you know, ghetto is a Yiddish word, and it was it was to contain people. By the kleptocrats? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I get really concerned. You know, I used to live in the Tenderloin, and I knew most of my neighbors were disabled like me. And then you're forced to live next to people that may in fact be criminals and et cetera, and not allowed to be safe in your home, in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you can um, look up who, who is a child molester in your neighborhood. I believe this is the new, new thing. I haven't <laughs> bothered. You sh well, I <laughs> highly suggest every single person in the Tenderloin look on Megan's list and okay. really look at the registered sex offenders. I mean, one thing, you know, I'm hoping to do at some point in my life is really look at how we put the most vulnerable children next to some of the most uh, predatory beings in, in the city. Yeah, well, I think that, well, San Francisco has always had a lot of, criminals come here to, I live on the same block as a lot of um, people coming right out of San Quentin live in a, like that, mm -hmm. you know about it, that yes. five story building, I think it's 111 Turk. Yes. But nobody's well, bothered me yeah. once, mm -hmm. nobody's laid a hand on me, nobody's no, done anything to me. No, I've been lucky me. that way too, I've, I've been, been there a long time. I walk around all the time, all hours of the day, no one ever mm -hmm. bothered, I don't know what people are talking about, I mean I hear it outside, I hear people arguing and mm -hmm. carrying on, but that's just life, you know, that's just the seamy side of life, and I kind of... I'm glad that people are doing that because I, I can't be in a very sterile environment. I grew up with the GOP and it was not, you know, it was something that I can't complain about, but it's just something you have to like unlearn a little bit because it's not reality. They, a know. lot of the violence comes from outside. A lot exactly. of the, oh, the they, the, I mean, there the, are people that commute to the Tenderloin to sell their wares. Oh yeah, yeah, And that's you know, true. and then they get back on the bar train and, and go back up. <laughs> Train and tunnel. Yeah. yeah. Have you noticed not to change the subject? Have oh, you sorry. noticed Walgreens prices almost doubled lately? You got to buy have, something. They have. Yes, they are higher. Drastically uh, higher. Um. Well, things I noticed that things that I felt were co I was comfortable buying. I'm. I. I. I feel. Like, do I always have to wait for the sales? And mm. you know, it's sort of like you sort of like have to time it. But you know, let, it's hard to hard to like live that way. Yeah, yeah. I've just got a few things because I've got like five minutes. I've got all these things written down. Now we've got Papa John's Pizza coming to the. Uh, I don't know if they've built it yet, but it's coming to somewhere on Farrell Street. And I think they're pretty right wing, aren't they? And I don't know why our supervisors are inviting all these right wing businesses to come in after years and years of the supervisors priding themselves into keeping on keeping them out. It's because it's a new board. I well, mean, well, the board has just got to. Yeah, we've, we've got a lot of problems with developers taking seats on the board, and it's not about a community or a neighborhood anymore. And when it's not about that, you don't care who Papa John's is. You, you got the these, deal, well, you sold it, Domino's you brokered is, it. <laughs> Domino's is the worst offender. Well, they've been Absolutely. there a long time. They're not. They're not. Are they based in America though? Uh, they are they're multinationals. Uh, well, the the guy who runs it has a special community Christian community in Florida, I think the Ave Maria or something. Uh, I've eaten Domino's pizza in Australia, so oh, I know it's okay. all over the world. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, he's kind of like a super, super Catholic, you know. Th these oh. these Catholics are, are more Catholic than the Pope. You know, they, you know, it's like <laughs> Mel Gibson was one of them, yes. Oh my God, well that's, yeah. that's enough said. Mel Gibson's okay, one of so them. That, and uh, so these, I don't, do we, can we expect to see more of this uh, corporate 
uh, entities invited into the tenderloin to I take over these okay, bloated absolutely. storefronts rather than mm -hmm. inviting the community I, and I, I charging them less taxes instead of these corporations less taxes to have the same storefronts. We could make use of the storefronts too. They act like they're not the only job creators. Well, I, they're not I the only job creators. So what is it? I'm a job creator. You're a, she's a us. job creator. You invest know, in we're us. The, we're the I have to report a conflict of interest with Papa John's because they did they did bring I pizzas remember. into one of our, our groups. So I'm telling you, you know, I can't, I can't trash okay. them too loudly. We aren't. I, I did today. We could go back to trashing Domino's. Yes, <laughs> yes. Domino's is fair game. <laughs> and how about these new food trucks you're seeing all around? What, what's up with that? Do, what's wrong with well, our restaurants? Well, it'd be great if they were uh, affordable for everybody to eat from. <laughs> but they, they're just in the, these little enclaves, you know. Uh, there's cool. one near Costco. There's a, they're all over the place. They're just popping up everywhere. Well, it's less overhead. You know, a restaurant has to, they have to pay rent, they have, you know, they have to employ more people, they have, you know, they have to have premises, they have to have, they have to have, be able to, you know, health inspectors. So hence the store board storefronts. Uh-huh. I think that some of the displaced medical cannabis uh, community uh, collectives should just kind of push right alongside the food trucks and be like, look, you know, if, if, if the feds come, we'll just, uh ride over here you know because these are these were main uh hubs of our community that we need to reestablish, especially in district five i mean the the work that martin olive did and the work that you know hope net did in district six this is crazy these were great neighborhood players that uh we just haven't stood up to the feds enough frankly we haven't no we haven't and we've okay. got a less than a minute left and i okay. they I, complied they came to our meetings they the, the clubs came to our meetings, they did outreach, you know, and they, they complied with the state laws. You know. They paid a lot of taxes, the third largest tax paying entity in the whole city. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, we worked to establish neighborhood relationships, you know, mm -hmm. everybody really worked on that. We knew we had to be not good players, we had to be great players, and then to be shot down for the same reasons, and uh, we really need our city attorney to question Melinda Haig about selective enforcement. We've got huge... And to, and to question Mayor Lees about, about the... Uh, the uh, displaced community displaced centers for yeah. for Raper Room and Hope okay. Net. Okay, and we're out of time, treatment. folks. So um, watch the Axis of Love show tomorrow night, 10 o'clock, Channel 29. Watch Psychic Frank every, uh, I guess it's going to be day after tomorrow, every second and fourth Thursday at 5 p.m. So. Yay, all of our friends on TV. Yay. Thank you. And <laughs> vote. If you haven't voted, oh my God. Please, vote. please vote. Do not <laughs> let the reptilian brain stems get into power. Thank you. Your amygdala is too big.